Hello, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today, we're going to continue working with area between curves, but this time we'll have where these functions cross each other multiple times. Instead of just having two intersections, we'll have more. So here's a picture of one of what we're talking about. It's the same principles we've been working with, so this should go pretty fast. And that is, we've got to start off by figuring out where do these things cross. When you don't have a calculator, you have to just take the two functions and set them equal to each other. When you have a calculator, it's also pretty easy because you just set them equal to each other and uh, see where the points of intersection are. But in this case, we need to set them equal to each other and solve it. So I've got this set up. How do we solve a weird thing like this? You pretty much have to just take everything over to one side and then set it equal to zero. So let's do that. The nice thing here was the x squareds cancel, and now we can factor out what they have in common. And I see that they've both got a 3x I can factor out. So that leaves me with an x squared minus 4 equals 0. And now if you solve this with the zero product property, 3x has to equal 0, which gives you x equals 0. And then x squared minus 4 has to be, uh, when you solve that, you're going to get a plus or minus, right? A plus or minus 2 when you take the square root. That now gives me that this is my A, this one here is my B, and that one is my C. So the smallest one would for A would be negative 2, the one in the middle is my 0, and then the last one is 2. Now the reason we want to do that is because it helps us set up our boundaries of our integral when we start working with the integral. So now we set up the integral that represents the total area. So we're going to end up with two integrals because we have two shaded regions. And the reason we have to have two integrals is because the one that's on top here, the graph on top is, in this case, it's the cubic. And then here, the graph on top is the quadratic. And so it switches the functions, which one we put first with the subtraction. We've got our first integral from, and I could say a to b, but the numbers are so simple, right? I don't, I mean, it's just a zeros and negative two, positive two. Let's just put negative two to zero. Now, which one came first? It was the cubic. So let's write that out first. And then we will subtract the one that was the quadratic, which was this one, negative x squared plus 2x. And if you notice, I made sure that there were parentheses around this because I am subtracting the whole thing. And then I have to say that it's with respect to x. Technically, I should probably put brackets around the whole thing to make it look right that I'm. it's d of x of everything. Uh, then I go, what's my next integral? I'm going from 0 to 2. And then now I swap them, right? The cubic is underneath. If I look at the picture, the cubic is now underneath and the quad, the, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the quadratic. The quadratic there is on top. So I just switch them around and you get this here. Now I could then uh, look and see, like, does anything combine like terms? Yeah, if I distribute this negative, I've got x squared and an x term, they would combine. Uh, same here, the x squared and the x term would combine. But for this lesson, I'm just showing you how you set it up. Your answers, when you check your answers for the practice, the answers will have them simplified. They'll combine like terms and put it all together. Just so be careful about that so you know if you're doing it right. There's kind of a cool way to cheat on this, and that is if you're able to use a calculator, this is kind of cool. You could use an absolute value for this. Here's how that works. You take the absolute value of the difference of the two functions from A to C instead of A to B and then B to C. You just put it all together. Right? Pause and write this down if you don't have it because I'm going to go back to the other screen. So right here, I've got my function f on top, right? This one's f, this one's g, and then here, g is on top and f is down there. But when you take the difference of them, see here it's f minus g, and then here it's f minus g. If you kept the order the same, I know this is confusing. If you left it as f minus g and didn't have the absolute value and did not have the absolute value, it would be this area. And then this area would be f minus what's on top, which would create a negative area. And so by taking the absolute value, it makes it positive. Basically, it just flips these things completely around uh, by putting the f first. Now that you want to be careful if you ever use this, uh, that you want to be careful that you don't do the absolute value of the integral like that, right? Of blah, 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 of d of x. You don't want to put the absolute value on the outside. That does not give you that. Um, but now again, that's only, mo most students, you want to break it up and use a, b, and c separately like this and set up the three integrals because often you won't be allowed a calculator on these problems. For this practice, you will, but I'm making you set up all of the integrals. So don't just use the absolute value on this, but I thought I'd throw it out there because I did see just a couple of uh, test questions as I was going through a whole bunch of different exams that had something like that 
on it. Okay, last one. So now we're going to say we have uh, this as our A, we'll go there, and this one as our B. Now notice that it doesn't cross a nice simple grid, and so you might have to use a calculator to find the points of intersection. You know how you can store it, store a point of intersection, we practiced that in our last lessons, and then you can set up your integrals with an A and a B. This one happens to be easy enough, because there's only this one variable right there, that we could solve it without needing the calculator. Let me show you how you do that. You just take this and set it equal to each other. This, you have this one, you set it equal to one, the other line, and then you can solve from here. Multiply both sides by negative one half, and then you take the square root of both sides. You end up with plus or minus the square root of two. So this one's negative square root of two, this one's positive square root of two. And now that lets us set up our integrals. Now, how many integrals will we need? One, two, three. There are three regions. So we'll need three integrals. So the first one just goes from negative two to negative square root of two. So that's my A, my negative square root of two. And if you had used a calculator, you'd give me a long crazy decimal and you'd have to store it as A, and then you could just write A right there. And then which one comes first? We've got the line that goes first, so it's gonna be one minus, and then the parabola, the quadratic. So I'm going to subtract two and add one half x squared. Hopefully you're following why I added, because I'm subtracting this whole thing. So the minus distribute distributes. And then that's with respect to x. And then plus, so we've got region one down. Now I do the next one. I'm gonna go from negative square root of two and positive square root of two, right? Because I'm doing this region, so a to b. And then now the parabola is first. So I can write up two minus one half x squared and then minus the line there, which is just a one with respect to x. And then my last region, I'll have my square root of two and I go up till I get to two. And which one is first? The line is first, so one minus, and then I do the same thing that I just had right there. Now that's the setup. I could clean this up, simplify, combine like terms, one minus two would combine and so forth. You got all these little numbers here, constants that combine, but this is the setup that you could then plug in a calculator to get the whole thing figured out. Okay, so that is the practice of what you're doing in today's lesson and in today's practice problems. Uh, those of you who have a test up next, good luck on that test. Uh, and then when we come back to our next lesson, we will start getting into volume. We've covered everything with area now, and then we'll start getting into some volume. And that's the last thing we'll have to work on this year is solids based on different graphs. It's kind of cool. It's weird stuff, but, I, but it's kind of cool. And it's the last thing we got to deal with for the AB students. Okay, rock that master check. I'll see you back in the next one.